there, folks. My name is Emily. And I'm Elk. And we are Oh My Word, a podcast where we discuss books, movies, musicals, TV shows, etc. And share the content with you so that you know what you're getting into. Yes. And how? what's the quick way for you to know what you're getting into? You just got to look out for pearl, pearl clutching scales. And you're like, oh, violence, language, romance. Is it a one? Is it a zero? Is it a three? Is it a four? Is it a two? Who even knows? Well, you know by looking and then you know. So zero is obviously very good. Well, obviously, the zero is very good because that means that there's none. And four is not very good because that means that there's a lot. So not good. But today, what we're talking about has nothing to do with any of that. Because... That's true. Right. We're actually doing sort of like a tribute today, which we've done these before. The last one we did is for mm-hmm. Anne Rinaldi, right, who's, who's an author. And this one that we're doing today is for Stephen Sondheim because... Emily staged a protest and said, if we don't talk about her most favorite person in the entire world. Okay, it didn't exactly happen like that. I'm kind of <laughs> paraphrasing the way it went down. But it kind of He's not like my that. most favorite person in the world. But I do appreciate his work quite a lot. And I will say that celebrities die all the time just as much as regular people die all the time. <gasps> so it shouldn't necessarily be that... Like, a celebrity's death means more to us than, you know, someone we know personally. But some celebrities, some celebrity deaths do hit you a little bit harder. And this one, I won't say it hit me in an emotional way, but it did strike me. Because he's been a, he's been a Broadway fixture for so long. Yes. You know, so it's sort of hard to think about Broadway without Sondheim. I mean, he's been working since 1957. And he was working pretty much all the way up till very recently. So it's just weird. You know, I mean, because that like that spans almost all of Broadway history. Yeah. You know, if you if you say that Broadway started, which people do, that Oklahoma was the first official real Broadway musical, right? 1943. Like it's the first there were musicals before that, but Oklahoma is usually considered like the first in the genre and the style of what would become the American musical in terms of the story and how the music flows as opposed to a musical review. So he started in 1957, you know, so he's, he's been there and suddenly he's not. Yeah. And also there's almost always one of his shows playing, even though he just yeah. passed. So he passed away. Um, just, but I don't know, it was a week or two ago. He was uh, November 26th. Okay. And he's, he's 90, he was 91, I think. Or something. Mm-hmm. It, there wasn't any specific illness. Like, I don't know that this was something anticipated, aside from just the fact that he was elderly, but not... It was. I don't think he was battling anything specifically, as far as anyone knows. And even at that that time, he's got, like, three shows on Broadway right now. Because right. there's always one of his shows playing, almost. So, he's always... Is, really? Yeah, like you said, he's always there. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, I think... Yeah, so people have always just liked him. When someone doesn't cause too much controversy, and you're just... No, you're just, you're just, you know, you're writing your shows and, and it's coming out good and you're not known for being a jerk or stuff like that. People are happy to celebrate you, right? They're happy right. to be a fan of yours if they like your work and they like you as a person or if there's nothing to not like you as a person. Almost. Right. So, I mean, he's known, he's, he's, he is a composer, he was a composer also and, and, you know, he wrote the musicals, but I think people talk a lot about his lyrics, that that's what he's specifically known for. But we should actually name some of the shows so people realize who we're talking about. Well, we'll start with the first two shows he worked on. He was just the, I shouldn't say just the lyricist, but he was the lyricist as opposed to lyricist and composer. So those were West Side Story and Gypsy, which I think West Side Story might shock people. And that's what I'm saying. Okay, it was 1950, I think 57 for West Side Story. And he was born in 30. So he was 27. Like he was pretty young and he was brought on, like that's his first big show. Probably one of the first shows he worked on is West Side Story. That's part of Tick, Tick, Boom, right? The, um, John Larson, well, Andrew Garfield, John Larson keeps saying, Sondheim made it big at 27. He made it at 27. He keeps talking about that. And I think a lot of people consider West Side Story to be like the greatest musical ever. So that's also not like a small thing. Yeah, exactly. He didn't write his first musical. It was The Yearling, which ran for like three performances. Because then you'd be like, okay, that's reasonable. He was a lyricist on West Side Story, which even if it's not your personal favorite, in the pantheon of American musicals in terms of it being like revolutionary and being indicative of the form, it's one of the top few. So, you know, you don't have to like it to recognize its its place 
in history. So, okay, West Side Story and then Gypsy, which, like, same thing. Gypsy was a huge musical, and he was the lyricist for that. And then he has a string of musicals that he was the lyricist and composer for, including A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum, Company, Follies, A Little Night Music, Pacific Overtures, Sweeney Todd, Sunday in the Park with George, Into the Woods, and Assassins, just to name a few. There are uh, some others, but those are probably the better known ones. And you're right, he is known as a lyricist, though if you listen to his you can also recognize his musical style. I guess like you can with any Broadway composer, maybe any musician in any genre. Like you start, I mean, if you hear a Sondheim song because of, I sing, but I don't really read music. So I, I like, I can't talk about music in like very technical ways, but there's just something he has to the quality of the songs because they'll, they'll change tempo and they'll change sort of tone midway through a lot of the songs. And as a singer, trying to learn a <laughs> Sondheim song is a challenge. And it would be interesting to know, like, when they're teaching it to someone on Broadway, how much of what they're doing is happening, you know, like, okay, here's the sheet music, but they go off and do their own thing because it's wild. <laughs> Like, it'd be really hard to learn, but it, I mean, it's a challenge in a good way, too. So, I wonder if that's, there's something about, I don't specifically not like any of the Sondheim shows, but I'm not, people who are, like, really, really big fans of them, I'm not, I'm not, like, a huge fan specifically either. I kind of, mm. I'm kind of a little bit more neutral, or, like, there's some songs that, like, oh, yeah, that one's a good one, that one's a good one, but there's no specific one, I think, that I would, like, that, oh, I would see the show, like, once a year. Okay, there's actually probably no show that I'll see once a year. <laughs> but, um, you know, okay, so for example, like Assassins, right? People love Assassins because about the people who try to assassinate the president, right? And the opening song is like, everyone deserves a right to be happy. And I'm like, I remember when I was sitting there, I had no idea what I was, oh, okay, I'll go see Assassins. And I did it. And I'm like, what am I watching right now? Like, what is, what is the point we're getting to? So I think maybe that's it that just because for, for my own, for myself specifically, I want to know the point that we're getting to. You know, mm. when I when I read a book or watch something, like I want there to be like, what is the end game here? Right. Sure. Like, yes, it's about just sitting and enjoying or whatever. But a lot of people mm -hmm. are like, oh, his lyrics discover, you know, this this underbelly of humanity or like blah 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 about how like oh he's discovering parts within ourselves. I think they do that with like Into the Woods, the way he's like his irony of you know and the witch and blah a bunch of different stuff. And I'm like, no, I don't see it. So mm. that is definitely very subjective, <laughs> but yeah. I also for like assassins, like I don't understand what we're trying to like, everyone deserves the right to be happy. So that's why you get to sing about being assassins of presidents. Like, no, I'm not, even though again, like if, if I would look at some of the individual songs, I, I could be like, oh, that's a good song. That's a good song. But also when the whole show right. comes together, I'm like, I don't know. Into the Woods was like that for me also. When I saw Into the Woods, I was like, oh yeah, Into the Woods, everyone talks about Into the Woods. And then I was watching and I was like, what, what is going on here? These people are all crazy. <laughs> like, but if, if I'd only hear the soundtrack for it, I'd be like, oh, that's good, that's good, probably. So it's, like, right. weird. There's, there's, like, a disconnect just for me specifically between... I don't know. It's funny. I don't... I don't. I can't explain what it is. It's just... I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just different types. But I wouldn't... Yeah. You can't not admire the work that he's done or say that, like, wow, he's had a massive right. impact. You can't... Like, it's not... It's not. You can't not do that. Like, it's... It's just so obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. That's the other thing he's known for is taking things that wouldn't normally be thought of as a musical topic and making them into a musical like Sweeney Todd, oh, right? Yeah. So maybe that was just his thing. He wanted to try to musicalize things that you wouldn't normally think of as being on it, the musical stage, on the Broadway stage. And I think the thing about his music that could make it, it's... I think like if I was listening to, if I, if someone asked me describe Sondheim's music, which I guess you're asking me to, cause that's what this episode is about. I think the first thing I would say is it's clever. Like the lyrics are very clever. It's interesting to see his rhymes. He rhymes words that you wouldn't anticipate. And sometimes he has rhymes that are within the line. And then also at the end of the line, like if you love words, which we do, you, you have to appreciate his lyrics, but it's maybe not like listening to, I'll go back to Rogers and Hammerstein. You, you could turn on that a soundtrack and just listen to it musically whereas Sondheim may be the music I mean you said you like the music and not always the stories but it's just it's just a different kind of music but 
he is fantastic, or he was fantastic and clever and left such a mark on American musical theater. By the way, you see that because they said that when he started working, if you think about how American musicals really started with Oklahoma and those shows, because not because they never had stuff on stage before, because it was about integrating the music into the story, right? That's kind of a change right. there. So he was he was mentored, right? He's mentored by Oscar by Oscar Hammerstein. Hammerstein? Hammerstein? <laughs> right? He was, he was mentored by him. So he really has been right. there for, for all of it, basically. So you're not as big of a fan of Sondheim as I am. I, well, I really like West Side Story. I guess, like, looking at the list of his musicals, I don't know if any of them would rank on my top, but there are things about some of these musicals that I do really like. And then I'm going to talk about Into the Woods, because Into the Woods, my guess would be, like, probably his most popular musical. I think more than Sweeney Todd, which is the only other one that I think would be close. Yeah, because I think Sweeney Todd has to speak to a specific type. Like, you have to get the dark part of it. Yeah. Oh, well, my actually, my favorite of his probably is a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, which was his first, that was his composition and his lyrics. And it is really funny and fun. It's interesting, the, the opening song for that, something, oh, A Comedy Tonight. It's one of those stories which you hear about on Broadway all the time. They were in Boston, I think, or wherever they were, you know, trying out the show before going to Broadway. They had a different opening number and it was sad and boring and slow or something and it wasn't working. So like the night before they were supposed to open on Broadway or something like that, he wrote this new song for them. I don't know if literally the night before, but it was very, very shortly before. He's like, oh, okay, I'll try this one instead. And that song is like you hear the first notes and and it takes you in and it's so different from apparently what the original song was that it changed like what people expected going into the musical. There's so many interesting stories like that on Broadway. I think that's pretty cool. And that was his first one. And then some of his musicals, like Anyone Can Whistle and Do I Hear a Waltz, most people have never heard of. Anyone Can Whistle did not have a very long, oh, Do I Hear a Waltz did not have a very long run on Broadway at all. But one of the things I like about his music as a performer is that he has a lot of really good songs for altos and mezzo-sopranos. We usually think of Broadway leading ladies as these soaring sopranos, unless they're older, but he has a lot of songs that are really great for people who don't sing like Galinda in <laughs> Wicked which is really nice. And then Company was a really interesting show. Both Company and Assassins, I saw at the same theater. I mean, they're both like small cast yeah. shows, which is cool that he he manages to put... A lot of times I don't like some of these really small cast, small Broadway shows because I don't feel like I'm getting that Broadway vibe, like something's missing, but he manages to give you that Broadway vibe that you're going to the theater and there's a show and there's a spectacle and still managed to have a small cast, which I think is an interesting skill. The cool thing about company is that it's not always, but often the people who are in the cast, which is also like six or seven or eight people, often they're the ones also playing the music. It's not always, but you, very frequently oh. it's done where the, or the main guy is not necessarily playing the music, but the mm -hmm. other people in the cast who are, because they're coming in and out of scenes, they're the ones playing the music. Which is always kind of a cool thing because it's also it's a little bit different. So that is yeah. interesting. At least the version I saw had that. Um, I like Sweeney Todd. It's a weird musical, for sure, and it's pretty dark. And I remember my parents seeing it and not taking me to see it when I was like thirteen, and I was really upset. But then I saw it as an adult, and I was like, okay, I guess it's reasonable that you didn't take me to see this bloody gruesome musical, which is apparently worse on stage than. In the movie, I mean, which is weird because you'd think the movie would have more opportunity for gruesome bloodiness, whereas the the show can't have that same, you know, level of graphics and special effects. Um, but I think the things that that's worse, I think there's like a very sexual song that the judge sings on stage that is not in the movie. There's still inappropriate sexual stuff in Sweeney Todd, don't get me wrong, but I think the stage version is actually worse. But it's a fun musical and I like the movie version. I I know people say like Johnny Depp is not a singer, which 
he's not fine. And Angel, not Angela Lansbury. She is fantastic. Helena Bottom Carter. Angela Lansbury did on Broadway and she's amazing. And she can do anything. Um, she's second to like Julie Andrews for me, but she's very close. But Helena Bottom Carter did a good job too. Well, if it's their characters, it's their types to play that, those types. So, you know, whatever singing wise is one thing. But, like, they're both very fit for those kind of parts. Yeah. And, you know, if you watch old musicals, sometimes you don't get the best singers. Like, it's weird. Sometimes, actually, people weren't such great singers, but it just sort of, like, that wasn't the purpose. Like, now everyone's an amazing singer all the time. But it sometimes works when you just get into the character of it, you know, that they, like, cast the right person for it. I think they also used to dub more frequently. I don't think they necessarily dub so much anymore. That's true. And then just briefly on Into the Woods, because I know it's super popular. And I was like you, I went to see it. I was like, oh, Into the Woods. Like, I should finally see it. Everyone talks about it. And high schools like to do it. And the first act was great. And then the second act happened. And I was like, why do we even need the second act? Let's just leave it with the first act. It, like all these fairy tale stories, I get it. It's like, oh, what if fairy tales weren't what we thought they were? But and I don't even have a problem with that. I mean, you obviously like to rewrite fairy tales. So it's not even that's a problem. It just didn't do it for me. I don't know. At the time, it was just it was weird. So, okay. So it's kind of that sense that I have toward a lot of the musicals. Like even Gypsy, which you yeah. have the great Rose is a great character because she's like a mix of like a soccer mom, tiger mom, helicopter mom, everything. Mom. <laughs> also living vicariously through her children. So that character is fantastic. Right. But then her daughter ends up as a burlesque dancer. So like... Are we, what are we celebrating here right now? So, I mean, and the whole thing is kind of right. like funny how they take the Let Me Entertain You song and it comes with this like little cutesy song and also becomes this like really provocative song. So intellectually, like it's kind of funny, but at the same time, you're like, what are we watching? What are we seeing right now? What is, like whose side are we on here right now? So I think that's yeah. what, so maybe some people sit there saying, no, this is what art is. It throws you for a loop of the human condition and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but for me, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I don't need to see a barber slitting people's throats or presidential assassins singing about their right. woes. Like maybe, right. maybe a good old fashioned romance is just what I need. Right. Well, okay. Well, that I don't know, but well, <laughs> I didn't really push it. We're gonna see something wrong or something instead. Yeah. There we go. But as we said at the beginning, no matter your personal taste, he he was like a he was a Broadway fixture. If you have never seen anything by Sondheim. You should see something by him. Yeah, you could say listen to that. Yeah, or, you know, or at least listen to some of his music. Start with the funny thing happened on the way to the forum. That yeah, fun. that was just fun, basically. But yeah, I'm I'm glad that Elt allowed us to talk about Sondheim because if anyone deserves a tribute on a podcast where we do talk about musicals a fair bit, Sondheim is that person. And now I am going to make sure that Emily replaced certain some things which she may or may not have taken to make sure that this episode happened i know nothing i did nothing and i'm gonna leave it at that okay apparently she thinks i'm gonna believe that i just have an empty shelf right here for no reason and not because there was something very valuable on the shelf i would never touch anything that didn't belong to me unless i had a very good reason anyway thank you so much for listening folks and we will catch you next time cheers people Oh My Word podcast is brought to you by the Pearl Clutching Basement Dwellers at Oh My Word. Follow us on Instagram for updates at Oh My Word Podcast or like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For full episode notes and details, visit eltenabam.com. Music is by Tim Berg. See you next time.